Imposter syndrome, a feeling of self-doubt about our accomplishments. When you feel like you're a phony despite any success you've had. According to Wikipedia, imposter syndrome is a psychological pattern in which an individual doubts their accomplishments and has a persistent internalized fear of being exposed as a fraud. You feel like the things that you've accomplished are due to luck rather than actual ability. You're just waiting, thinking thoughts like, is today the day that they figure out that I'm a fraud? Am I gonna get fired? I can't believe I tricked them into thinking I'm good enough for this. Imposter syndrome is a phenomenon experienced by nearly everyone. In fact, an article in the International Journal of Behavioral Science said that nearly 70% of adults will experience imposter syndrome at least once in their lives. So in today's video, I'm going to be talking about my experience with imposter syndrome and four lessons that I've learned that can help you to overcome it. Also, really quick, if you enjoy this kind of self-development content, please make sure you subscribe. It really helps me out. I'm trying to get to the point that I can make YouTube a full-time career. Also, if you'd like to join a community with some like-minded people, I have a Discord channel that I've started, uh, definitely trying to connect more and build a community so you can find that in the description. Also, if you could hit like on the video for the YouTube algorithm, that helps a ton too. Sometimes when I'm watching a video and the person asks me to hit the like button, I'll hit it and I'll be like, I got you, man. So if you could just give me like a, I got you, man, and hit the like button, I'd really appreciate it. Okay. Story time. Growing up, I was always the chubby kid. Kids made fun of me in school and I was overall really insecure about my weight. So when I was 14, I asked my dad, who was a personal trainer and had worked in the fitness industry for years to write me a workout, nutrition, and supplement plan. And that's where my interest in fitness started. Fast forward to when I was 18 years old, I got a job at this place called Vitamin Shop. And we sold things like protein powder, multivitamins, colon cleanses, and tons of other things. I worked there for about a year gaining knowledge and experience in the supplement industry before I decided that I wanted to try to find a nutrition shop that was more geared towards bodybuilders and bodybuilding because that's what I was really into at the time. I thought I was super knowledgeable when it came to supplements, almost to the point that I was a little bit cocky about how smart I was when it came to stuff like that, like protein powder and multivitamins and all that stuff. So I started looking and I found this place that looked like a bodybuilder's dream. They had posters on the wall of bodybuilders like Jay Cutler, Ronnie Cole, Coleman and of course Arnold Schwarzenegger. The walls were made of brick and they had protein powder and other bodybuilder supplements covering nearly every inch of wall space. So I talked to the owner and I told him that I'd like to apply for a job. He asked me if I had any experience in the industry and I told him that I had been working out consistently for four years and had worked at the vitamin shop for the last year. He said, come back tomorrow when I open the store and we'll talk. I thought I was a shoe in I thought I had the job for sure. I knew my stuff. So when I got there, he had two chairs set up in the middle of the store. He was sitting in one and he asked me to come and sit in the other. It was kind of like a movie. It was really dramatic. He first said, so you want to work here, huh? And I was like, yeah, of course. And he asked me if I thought that I knew enough to sell supplements to serious bodybuilders and fitness people. And again, I said, yes. Then he proceeded to question me about all of the science and everything behind these supplements and how they enter the body, affect the cell and cause our bodies to build muscle and burn fat. And I, of course, didn't really know any of the answers. I didn't understand all the science behind everything. All I knew was that whey protein got into your muscles faster than casein protein did. I didn't know how it worked, I just knew that it did. He then proceeded to school me in everything that he knew, making me feel like I knew absolutely nothing. He even asked me questions that were pretty complicated and then would kind of be like, you didn't know that? And he, I don't know, he just kind of made me feel like I was almost stupid for thinking that I was good good or smart enough to work at a store. And the way he talked to me made me feel like I didn't belong in the industry at all. And it was almost painful the way he made me feel. I was nearly in tears when I left because I felt so stupid and I felt like a fraud in an industry that I was super passionate about. Since then, there's been this fear that the things that I'm doing, I feel like I'm almost BSing my way through it. Like when I thought I had this knowledge, I thought I was good only to get exposed for not being good, for being a fraud. That one event has affected me throughout everything that I've done up to this point. Even when it comes to video and video production, I'd get people asking me to shoot and edit videos for them, and I'd turn down the project because of my fear that I wouldn't be able to give them what they wanted. I'd see people like Sam Calder, Peter McKinnon, Ben TK, and other filmmakers and think that I'm nowhere close to that level. I've probably turned down thousands upon thousands of dollars of work just because of imposter syndrome. I was feeling like I was going to be exposed for not 
not being good enough or pissing someone off because they had this expectation that I was better than I actually was. It's actually terrifying. So now that you've heard a little bit about my story with imposter syndrome, here are four lessons that I've learned and continue to try to apply that you can use when you feel like imposter syndrome is creeping its way into your brain. Lesson number one, stop comparing yourself to others. Don't believe this comparison illusion. It's easy to get caught up in comparing ourselves to others. Like I said, for me, I was comparing myself to Peter McKinnon, Sam Colder, and Ben TK. But a lot of times when we see people that we look up to or see as better than us in our field, we forget that this isn't where they've always been. These guys all started with a cheap camera, Windows Movie Maker, and having no idea what they were doing, and straight up making bad videos. So whenever you find yourself comparing yourself to others, tell yourself these three things. They all started from zero, not knowing anything. They all sucked at one point and everything that they know you can learn. Lesson number two, stop trying to be perfect. There's nothing wrong with wanting to do a good job, but when you have a project that you worked on that looks good and the client is happy, but you sit and dwell on the things that weren't 100% perfect, that's a problem. Being stuck in that perfectionism mindset all the time will stay with you throughout future projects and may even keep you from pursuing those projects, like the ones I turned down because of the gut-wrenching feeling that I didn't do a good enough job on previous projects. Author and journalist Elizabeth Gilbert said, perfectionism is not about striving for excellence or healthy growth. It's a shield that we use to protect ourselves from vulnerability. The main takeaway here is to tell yourself it's okay for things not to be perfect. If you continue to focus on the small imperfections, you'll never get it done. You also may never start. So stop trying to be perfect. Done is always better than perfect. Lesson number three, celebrate the small victories. There are things that you're doing every single day that can be celebrated. I think it's just that we have this tendency to look at only the big picture. For example, I wanna have 100,000 subscribers on my YouTube channel so badly. I want it so badly that I sometimes forget to celebrate the times that I wake up in the morning to five or 10 new subscribers. But those are five or 10 new people that saw enough value in me to say to themselves, I like what this guy has to say, or I like the advice that he's giving. Just the fact that even one person likes what I have to say means so much. So try to notice the small victories that are happening every single day. I promise you, there are some. You just gotta look. And lesson number four, practice self-awareness. This is one that I consider probably the most important thing to take away from all of these lessons. If you only take one lesson away from this video, let it be this one. Self-awareness is so unbelievably important when going through life. Self-awareness is essentially these three things. It's the ability to see your yourself as you really are without judgment. It's the ability to reflect on your experiences and learn from them. And it's your ability to understand how others see you and how your actions affect them. Now, it's easy to think when we're experiencing imposter syndrome, thinking we're not good or talented enough, we're actually practicing self-awareness because we're being aware of our shortcomings. But that actually can't be further from the truth. With imposter syndrome, we unrealistically give ourselves reasons for why we're not good enough or why we're not talented enough, which keeps us from taking action. Self-awareness is when we're aware of what we need to work on, but understand that that it can be worked on. We can get better. It's okay for me to acknowledge that I'm not as good at creating amazing transitions like Sam Colder or Ben TK. That's not negative self-talk. That's self-awareness. The absolute truth is I'm not great or even good at everything, and I still have a lot to learn. You don't wanna be blindly overconfident, but you also don't wanna tear yourself down so much that it keeps you from taking action. Try to be realistic with your self-awareness. If you enjoyed this video and wanna see more like this, click here. All right, guys, I'll see you in the next video.